Hello and welcome to the ACMA Citizen Conversation Series. Today we're talking about tuning into kids TV. And we have a really interesting panel of industry experts, plus some kids from the Dallinghurst Public School. Let's check it out. And I think when we're talking about this audience of, of five, five to ten year olds in particular, tends to be get less attention from, from broadcasters in terms of commissioning than the preschool audience and, and the older audience. How well do you think this, the five to 11 year old age group, from your observation, is, is catered for in terms of, of television content? I think we've got um, a much broader range than we used to. Um, we've got obviously the, um, the children's channels. So a lot of our research is showing us it's good to have destinations, to use the lingo, that people can find content that they want. The fact of the matter is, what happens in reality in the 17 and 18 year old's life, those of us who have 18 year old daughters would well know, is very different from the kind of thing you probably want on a show which is broadcasting and, and getting an audience of, core audience of 9 to 12 year olds. We've also got soap opera kind of dramas that have been produced forever that's good for you know the tra that transition audience that they really like that kind of thing producers and broadcasters do have a you know a very tricky line to go about are we going to be lying about the reality of life how do we deal with with, with those dramas i think there are other influences that are probably more important if you were going to want good social outcomes for children you'd attack poverty before you attacked media content a fan wants to enter the world of the show or the game, they want to, more of it, they want to experience, they want to imagine themselves in that world, and I think that's an important thing to recognise. We'll never make art like you and Squidward! The core uh, fan of, of Spongebob are uh, um, you know, kids in that 5 to 9, 5 to 10, 5 to 11 sort of range, but they really relate to that thing that's shown in, in that little clip is that his positivity, like whatever the situation, he's positive, it doesn't matter what, he has this great persistent positivity. And we worked with Sydney Aquarium and uh, a, a year or so ago and uh, had an installation in their aquarium and it's really cool, it's really n another way to feel like you could be part of Spongebob Worlds and see him in his uh, natural surrounds. It's a user orientated world and I think that's an important thing for people who make and create media in any form is to be, you know, fan oriented because I think it's ultimately fans that you're going to be fulfilling the needs of. Fans are active, they're critically engaged and they're creative and so that means it becomes communal, it's a, it's a conversation. Now if I were to get 50 of these kids and to put them into the laboratory and to show 25 of them some sort of television show that was essentially fairly benign or, or pro-social and the other half um, some television content that was quite violent then to measure them for some measure of aggressive behaviour afterwards, you would find that one group, the group that saw the violent television, would be for about 15 to 20 minutes afterwards more likely to be aggressive. Um, but just like you know, with cigarette smoking, one cigarette doesn't kill you, but you know, smoking 50 cigarettes a day for 20 years is definitely going to have a big effect on your body. Across time, you just see this cumulative effect where people have a lot of exposure, tend to become more habitually aggressive. We, we know that it happens, but the task now is to, to work out how to, how to do something about it. And in particular, you know, working with media producers so that we work in a way that's cooperative and we're developing media with uh, keeping in mind the effects that it's going to have. The you are what you eat principle applies to neural development as much to muscle and bone development. My daughter, when she was five, came home from school um, caught me eating something that she thought was unhealthy and she said, you know, Dad, you know, that's, that's a sometimes food, you know, you eat too much of that. Okay. That is fantastic because I now have an eight-year-old girl who eats lots of healthy food, who's conscious of what she eats, conscious of exercise and conscious of balance in her life. And I think that media, which is a very big influence on children's lives just because of the sheer amount of hours they spend with it, is another area where we need to think about this idea of balance. Um, I think there's probably a lot of thought needs to go into how we are going to better serve this, partic this particular audience, which means you guys, um, and get you programs that make you actually want to watch television and give me a reason for having a job.